Hello, my name is John Hartman. I'm the Planning and Development Director for the City of Elizabethton, Tennessee. I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day today to learn about the Central Business Improvement District we're proposing for downtown Elizabethton. We believe that a Central Business Improvement District will help improve downtown Elizabethton and make it a destination for new businesses and residents. Let's get started. You can see from this slide that this is a specific area um, that typically we would commonly call our downtown area. Uh, and this is uh, from a plan that you may be familiar with or heard called the McGill plan before. After their analysis, this is an area that they have determined uh, to be an actual core area of business. And this is the district that we would concentrate on for forming a central business improvement district. Many times I've heard in the development preparation of this uh, proposal that why doesn't city council or why doesn't the city make improvements in the downtown district well there are about three major reasons why one of them of course being limited city funding uh, city council is is tasked with the difficult challenge of determining uh, where the limited amount of property tax and sales tax revenues can actually be distributed in the city and these property taxes and city taxes must be distributed equally among the city and it can be difficult for a city council to actually focus on one specific area to dedicate a majority of the tax revenues. The second item is the growing need for buildings and infrastructure improvements within the downtown area. Uh, there are definitely needs for building and infrastructure improvements um, unfortunately, city council, of course, and, and state, city government cannot go in and actually perform any kind of improvements on the buildings themselves. Uh, the infrastructure as well is something that is limited and, and it will cost a lot of money and city council has to be careful not to dedicate a lot of tax dollars to helping those building and in, in infrastructure improvements and investing uh, a lot in the downtown when there are other needs uh, such as repairing streets, repairing sidewalks, repairing infrastructure citywide. This is an area where the CBID can step in and be able to help fund some of these building improvements and infrastructure improvements as well. The third thing that limits really improvements to the downtown area is the priority of downtown improvements. Again, kind of re relating back to the first item of limited city funding, uh, Council has the difficult task of prioritizing. Do we want to do uh, downtown improvements or do we want to pave streets all over the city? You know, do we want to do downtown improvements or do we want to focus on uh, improving our sidewalks and repairing water lines and sewer lines and things of that nature? And so a combination of these three items are really some of the biggest limitations to, uh, to actually tax dollars being dedicated to the specific downtown district. At this point, I'm sure many of you have uh, begun asking, you know, John, you keep talking about the Central Business Improvement District, or CBID, but what actually is a CBID? A Central Business Improvement District is a specific district with an emphasis on improving and attracting new businesses. A Central Business Improvement District also serves to provide additional services above and beyond what the current, what the current municipality provides. The funding for a Central Business Improvement District also is based on a special assessment. And we'll look at this in a, in a few slides, but Tennessee Code Annotated uh, requires that a Central Business Improvement District special assessment be based on the benefit from the district. In other words, this could be square footage, uh, frontage, the evaluation of the property. Basically, the premise of this is that the property owners will receive a benefit of having a central business improvement district and the central business improvement district will make specific improvements to that area that we talked about earlier on the two previous slides about that downtown district or the central business improvement district and those benefits that will be received by the property owners will increase the property value of those properties and therefore with that in mind much as your taxes are assessed, which are based on the benefit you receive from the municipality, the special assessment of the CBID be based on your benefits from the specific district. And like I said, we'll look at a couple examples of this in a few slides. 
Now that we know what a CBID is, let's take a look at some of the benefits that a CBID can provide for the downtown area. Some of the benefits include to help prevent deterioration of downtowns. And basically the, the, the whole point of that is to help keep the property values up instead of having them deteriorate. One of the other aspects is to help modernize the central business districts. And this comes down to uh, additional infrastructure that may be needed. For example, if fiber optics would be needed in order to recruit a business to the downtown area, this is something that the CBID could specifically say, yes, we want to target, we want to look at this and add uh, fiber optics in order to recruit these businesses and increase the profitability of our current businesses within the district. The last aspect to look at here is the collective collaboration of businesses and property owners. We've all heard the, the saying, uh, four strands are stronger than one, and this applies to the downtown as well. Collective collaboration of, of the various businesses and the property owners within the downtown bringing together uh, small amounts of, of additional special assessment in order to benefit the larger district all will help play a, uh, an active and productive role in making sure that the downtown stays intact and uh, sees some improvements as well. Now that we know what a central business improvement district is and what are some of the benefits of a central improvement district, let's take a look at how the special assessments work within a central business improvement district or CBID and get kind of a concrete example of one of the scenarios in which it might work here in Elizabethton. So in this example you can see that we're looking at the block between East Elk Avenue and East F Street, Armed Forces Drive, and South Sycamore Street. There are approximately 17 buildings on this block, and, and we're going to kind of walk through two of the buildings as an example and then kind of give you a better idea of just what could be re generated in this block alone. You can see from this slide that we're just looking at a couple examples of the dressing room and the bonnet cake. The dressing room has approximately 25 feet of linear frontage on, on Elk Avenue, and the bonnet cake has approximately 50 foot of frontage on Sycamore Street. Based on a dollar per linear foot of frontage scenario in which a special assessment could be based, the dressing room annually would pay $25 and the Bonnie Kate would pay $50 annually. Taking a look at this scenario and applying it throughout the entire block, you can see the various properties, how much frontage they have and how much they would pay annually in special assessment. Just this block alone would generate $804 annually towards a central business improvement district. Now you might say that's not very much, but it's enough to help somebody put some paint on a building that may not be up to par, or help a downtown business with a facade grant that they may need. This money could also be used to install benches, put up new signage and the light poles, etc., etc., all which would benefit and help improve the downtown area. I hope at this point I've piqued enough interest in a central business improvement district for downtown Elizabethton to make you wonder, well, how do we create a central business improvement district? Well, Tennessee Code Annotated actually gives us direct instructions on how to create a central business improvement district. There are two ways that a central business improvement district can be created and two ways that a central business improvement district can be operated. The two ways that it can be created are one by a petition of three quarters of the property owners or two by resolution of city council either of those scenarios will allow for the creation of a central business improvement district once that district has been created there are two different ways in which it can be managed one is through the board of assessment and the city the second is through the district management corporation in the board of assessment and city model the city will actually manage and implement all of the projects or improvements for the Central Business Improvement District. A Board of Assessment is in place in order to assess each property and determine how much the special assessment will be for that property. The second way of, of managing is the District Management Corporation. In this case, the DMC manages the projects and improvements in the district as well as have powers such as purchasing, leasing, constructing or maintaining property and parking facilities, advertising, uh, business and residential recruitment,
contracting with professional services, aesthetic improvements, and other municipal powers. At this point, the DMC really gets as much power as City Council wishes for them to have. The other thing is the City Council with the DMC will go and would actually set the property assessment for each of the properties in the district. Now let's take a look at a couple of case studies here locally that we can compare and see how they have proceeded with the Central Business Improvement District. One of the most popular ones in East Tennessee is the downtown Knoxville case. Their CBID was formed in 1993, and they have developed the mission to enhance the downtown's existing assets and bring more people to downtown Knoxville to work, shop, live, and play. Downtown Knoxville used the District Management Corporation model, which, as we discussed on the last slide, means that they have sole management authority over the entire district and simply submits an annual budget to City Council for their approval. The Downtown Knoxville CBID offers development grants, event sponsorships, and actually manages the parking system in Downtown Knoxville. So if you go to Downtown Knoxville and pay for a parking garage or pay for a parking meter or anything, the money that you're paying to actually goes to the Central Business Improvement District. The Knoxville CBID District Management Corporation actually went as so far as to hire a director and marketing coordinator for their Central Business Improvement District and the marketing coordinator markets the downtown, helps recruit new businesses, and sponsor events uh, and organizes events in the Central Business Improvement District in order to get those people to come downtown Knoxville to work, shop, live, and play. Another case today for us to look at is the downtown Sevierville case. Downtown Sevierville's CBID was formed in 2004 and unlike Knoxville, they chose to have the city manage the entire district. As part of this project, they constructed a new event center, uh, they're making road and transportation improvements, they're enhancing their streetscape, they also constructed a transit center, and are managing their own parking within the downtown area. A goal of the downtown Sevierville CBID is luring new businesses into the downtown area. And by making all of these improvements, they will help increase the property values and help lure those businesses into the downtown area. Now that we've looked at a few other communities, let's see what possibilities exist for a CBID in Elizabethan. First of all, one of the requirements is to have a plan of improvement. We actually already have this plan if this is acceptable to the downtown property owners. The existing plan is the 2008 Downtown Enhancement Plan by McGill & Associates. This is a comprehensive plan that looks at making a variety of improvements to roads, intersections, traffic flow, as well as streetscape improvements in the downtown area. The second component we need to look at is the assessment scenario. And applying the example we looked at earlier of a dollar per linear foot, the coffee company, as you can see on the slide, would pay approximately $50 annually. The Bonnicate Theater would pay about $50 annually. Carter County Bank would pay about $76 annually. City Market, $100 annually. Best Portraits, $33 annually, and just to kind of give you a comprehensive idea of, of what is the potential revenue here, Elk Avenue alone would bring in approximately $4,137 annually into the CBID for improvements within the downtown district. Now, to get a better idea of exactly what improvements we could make with $4,137, we're projecting that based on the $4,137 brought in by Elk Avenue alone, we project about $8,000 could be generated for a CBID completely, including all the downtown area. So what can that $8,000 do for us? Well, it can do a lot. Let's take a look. Here's a picture from E Street that we're all familiar with. And this is a shot looking at what a CBID could do to this E Street streetscape. Let's take a look at that again. Before, after. You can see that the change is drastic. Can you tell what has changed? What has changed is we've added some trees, some canopies, a few lights, and the potential expense of this 
is not that much and could easily be obtained and completed with $8,000 a year. I'm sure most of you probably have some more additional questions and comments that you would like to ask. If so, please leave them in the comments box below and we'll do our best to answer them as frequently as possible. Thank you for taking the time today to watch this video and learn more about the Central Business Improvement District in downtown Elizabethton, Tennessee. Here's my contact information. Please feel free to call or stop by my office with any questions you would like answered. The next step in getting the Central Business Improvement District started will be to start a petition or request to City Council to pass a resolution creating a Central Business Improvement District. 